raw data. These are the amenities. Economists have taken off in one or two or three of these and put them in a model and said, uh-huh, cinemas make a difference, or pizza restaurants may, or restaurants may make a difference. What we do with the scene idea is to say, we don't want just one or two, we want all of them. We want to look at all these things and how the, how the whole configuration of a neighborhood is defined as a scene, and the scene is the aggregation of all of these things together, and how then people react to the pizza restaurant combined with a Baptist church or not, et cetera. Okay, so we then classify the values, which I, I flagged there, in terms of three general types, theatricality, authenticity, and legitimacy, which are pretty general, but these are more specific. These, these 15 we focus on a lot. So these, these are under, under those three general headings, we have specifics like traditionalism, self-expression, charisma, uh, uh, egalitarianism, glamour, uh, localism, ethnic pride, and so forth. And these, we're suggesting, are major drivers which differentiate, which can attract Sally to San Diego and, and, lead, and lead Sally to say, I'm not going to go to a small town in South Dakota or, or Texas. Okay, and uh, let's, I want to, and I'll, we'll elaborate. How do we use those 15 and how do they make a difference? Um, I'm going to focus on one that may seem the most outrageous and, and, and not appropriate, especially if we're talking about lower status persons. But I would, I'll, I'll add, I live, I've always lived at the U.S. I've never lived in Hyde Park or the Loop. I've always lived in Bronzeville, which is an African-American, classically low-income neighborhood, halfway between here and the Loop. Uh, and, and yet, my neighbors, 98% um, African-American, uh, have a sense of glamour which comes, well, I, I won't try to go through too, too, too much history and background, except to say this is not just a yuppie theory. We want to push on and see how, gla what, so what's glamour? We measure it with such things as these items get positive scores, these items get negative, stores, negative scores. Um, we have other, we have, have all 15, but I, I don't, we don't have time to go through all 15, so I'm going to focus on glamour just to show you some of these other things that are there. And then quickly, the, this is an idea of a why, why are these scenes more important for some people or some societies? These are too small and detailed for you to read. This is a summary of it, which is to say, as primordial attachments decline, you heard the, the, the the Dubai kind of example, as, the, as race, class, gender, and national origin recede in their explanatory power in, in people's lives <coughs> and in the ways that we can measure it with studies, then other things begin to enter, such as participation in scenes. And, and as there are less tight social attachments, we have more confidence and trust with uh, people in general, we have more time, that is, that some people have more, some have less time, but if, that is, people who are unmarried, who are unemployed, who don't have a job and so forth, have more time, those in turn lead them to go out, hang around on, in Streeterville in Chicago these days and so forth. They go, go to, uh, that is, the, this week with Taste of Chicago going on, you have a sense of all of this, all of, of how dramatic this is for the city. Uh, aesthetic sensitivity, sociability, people who, people who are really, who, who don't want to be sociable can still stay at, stay at home, but those who are more sociable are likely to, 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 to go out. Uh, information, et cetera. So, so these are the factors which in general tend to lead to more scenes, but, and this, this is too hard to read, but it basically shows moderate support for most of those propositions. But let me, let me briefly introduce how we, sort of, how we measure these scenes. Uh, we create a five-point scale from high to low for each of those amenities, like Baptist churches or pizza restaurants. So we have here, or instead, I don't have pizza restaurants, I have gospel singing groups, poetry slam venues. And on each of the 15 dimensions, they get a score from one to five. We then add these up for each, we, get, we add these up and then we count the number of things like Baptist churches in each zip code and we multiply it times that score. That then gives us a measure on uh, glamor, transgression, exhibitionism for every zip code in the US. And so this is our, this, these are our zip code level data for each of those dimensions. Then we can look at how do these vary by region. 
by, say, by big regions, but I'll focus more on specific metros. And in particular, for reasons of time, I'm focusing on glamour. And glamour is highest in LA, it's medium in Chicago, and on this score, it's lower in New York. Okay. If we then, I then went to LA and so I added a few more slides I, and I calculated these for the first time for neighborhoods in LA and found that even though this was not done for LA, it, I mean, we got, we got what you'd expect. Hollywood, the West, uh, the Pacific Palisade, Palisades, et cetera, are the, are the places that score highest. Watts and the like, the South Side areas were the lowest. Um, Okay, this is a major, a major finding. If you don't know about regression, let me just briefly summarize and say, what drives job growth? Why do some zip codes have more increase in the number of, 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 of jobs in, in, in the whole US and, what have, and which ones have, are losing jobs? And we put in the main variables that have been analyzed by most migration studies from the past. We have we have uh, uh, education, crime, cost of living, democratic voting, population size, uh, population, percent non-white, uh, population in, okay. Um, and then we add to these four, three, three measures of our scenes, glamor, tradition, and egalitarianism. What's the, what's the major, what are the major findings? What drives job growth uh, across all US zip codes? Number one factor was arts jobs. Number two was education. Insignificant crime, cost of living, and county population size. Glamour was more important than crime, than cost of living, or county population size. Wow, we were amazed at that. Okay, and so we've then gone on to specify that further, and um, I'm just gonna skip over some of this stuff for reasons of time. We, we, have, we have our 15 dimensions, and then we create these other kinds of, we call these, um, uh, um, what's our, our latest term is, um, complex scenes. Black is beautiful, Bobo's bliss, Wagner's folk, or say Disney heaven, think of the suburban, clean, Disney-like location. We can, we can define each of those in terms of how they rank on these more general. So these, these, the 15 I, I showed you are a little bit abstract, deliberately, because we want to be able, and we're using them in France, in Beijing, in Tokyo, and we then generate these in, a, in one in a similar manner, then we add some others for, for Paris and for, and for Tokyo, which are more specific to those locations. Uh, as we do here in the example of Bohemia. So Bohemia we can define in terms of these 15 by adding up, by creating an index of Bohemia based on weighting, weighting these, these dimensions. And so then we get the most Bohemian zip codes in Chicago uh, based, on, based on that sort of thing. Um, okay, uh, pushing on, this is too fancy. I want to show, okay. Um, I said we need different, we need ways of capturing different kinds of models and that scenes may either be important in their own right as in the case of glamour or the glamour or transgression or exhibitionism or localism may transform the operation of crime or income. That is, we're not saying race, class, gender and, our, and national origin don't matter. We're saying they're being transformed so what it means to be, as we heard in this discussion, what it, what it means to be Middle Eastern is different than you may have thought in the past. Okay, so how do we capture that? I'm suggesting look at these scenes dimensions and we can classify Dubai 10 years ago or different subpopulations, different neighborhoods within Dubai. Okay, what, what, this, what this then says is how can we then capture specifically, statistically here, the effects of a hierarchical social climate? Think of traditional Middle Eastern or a tolerant social climate. Uh, uh, in one of the earlier presentations I heard, you had, you had uh, political refugees versus people who are general immigrants. Political refugees are presumably more likely to be sensitive to a tolerant social climate. Uh, that is, if you're, if, you're get, if, you're, if, you're, if you're running away from Iran, you're probably not going to try to go to Iraq. You probably, you probably go to somewhere that's maybe a little more seen as a little more tolerant. Okay. Um, all right. 
the, the point of several, that, so the method that I want to show you very briefly is um, basically twofold. And I'll just illustrate them briefly here. Okay. One is called quantile analysis. So these are, this is, this, a quintile is a, there's five, there are five groups. Quantile, you could have any number, so 5, 10, 20, or whatever. And the idea of quantile analysis is that you, is that you look at the, at the effect of bohemian scenes on entertainment patents, for example. Do enter, do, do enter, uh, does a, how, how does, does, if you, if you have, if you're in a neighborhood or a city that is more bohemian, does it have more, enter, does, it, does it have people who file more entertainment patents? Florida suggests yes. I mean, Florida, Florida's big theory is, is sort of bohemia and tolerance drive everything. We're critiquing Florida and saying, no, not just one thing. We've got 15 different types. And these, and these we can capture in, the, in terms of, say, uh, urbanity. Urbanity goes from very low to very high. And what this shows you, basically, is that bohemia has a positive impact on entertainment patents only in places that are not very urbane. These two, or these three. But when you get to urbane locations like New York and Chicago and LA, Bohemia doesn't have any impact, or in fact it has a negative impact. Okay, so the, the point is the scene. Think of urbanity as a scene, as a scene dimension. The, the, the scene can shift the workings of the other variables in their relation to one another. That's a, maybe, okay. So that, that's, one, that's one simple example of a, of a method. I've got lot, lots of, just one, another example here. Uh, does, does, do high-tech jobs increase, uh, do, does, have, does having more high-techs, think Silicon Valley, increase employment growth in general? That is, if you've got more high-tech firms, do you have more job growth? And the answer is uh, yes in general. But if we want to say, in what kinds of scenes does this distinctly happen, the answer is, the more we have a self-expressive scene, the more we have job growth. Uh, and the same thing for population growth. So that is, people who want to work in high tech are distinctly attacked, att attracted to more self-expressive scenes than they are to less self-expressive scenes. That, that's an example of how we're not contradicting the other variables people have used. We're showing how they interact with, five minutes, see, I'm, I'm, I'm near the end. Uh, they interact with our scenes dimensions in ways that these are, are illustrating our methodology for capturing. The other methodology I'll just show here is one quick example is called geographically weighted regression. If you normally do, say, just if you just say have a national number, like 20% of Americans are changing their, their residence every, every year, that's a national average. If you do a regression and you try to say which Americans are changing location every year and let's look at income and age and so forth, what you get is a national average statistic for the entire U.S. That implicitly assumes, that implicitly assumes, I'm going to have wandering from this, that implicitly assumes that all Americans follow the same dynamic, that the same processes work for all Americans. What this does is say, we want to recognize that there are different processes in different locations. And we want to be able to estimate, for instance, how important is racism in a, in a, in a city or in zip code with, with a strong tradition of racism versus another where there's the opposite. And so we can, and we, and so we can find that sort, of, that sort of pattern for, say, a uh, change in population of non-white non residents. So you can, that is, you, can, you do not use a national average. You can estimate the coefficient, that is the relative impact of racism uh, and how it varies in every little zip code in the entire US. So and again, what this does is get us down, it drills down to the local scene in ways that 